The, my presentation is uh, conversion of fecal sludge to liquid fuels, as you have heard. Uh, why and how could it uh, work for small scale applications? And, uh, first of all, I would like to talk about uh, the organization that supports this, um, this research project. It's the AI3D, the Alliance for the Innovation of Infrastructure and Pipeline Integrity, uh, whose, fo whose focus is uh, mainly on education and research on fluids, transport, infrastructure, integrity management, that uh, fluids like water, with water, oil, and gas. Uh, uh, we have a strategic alliances with universities. In uh, this this uh, organization is based in Cuernavaca, Mexico. It's a city 100 kilometers uh, south of Mexico City, and um, there are strategic alliances there in Cuernavaca and in Mexico City with the universities and research institutes for the topic of education and research. But when there are uh, projects, uh, specific projects to to execute, uh, there are also um, private companies that are very close to this uh, organization. So why are we here? Well, we're here thanks to the Grand Challenges Exploration uh, Round 7 of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Uh, the proposal was, uh, the, the idea was to harness the energy contained in the fecal sludge and storing it in a form of a high value fuel uh, so that we could turn the fecal sludge into something more valuable and uh, put the economics on the side of the, of the products that we can obtain more than the service of uh, uh, emptying the pit latrines or, or uh, the, uh, how's it called? The, Let's, let's say for now, I think that you can remember the other one. <laughs> so, um, make, um, the, the thing it was to make it anything more profitable and safe for the, for the community. So, this is the outline of my presentation. Why liquid fuels from fecal sludge? How can it be done? Some, I will uh, tell you about some water content issues on, on fecal sludge and on that uh, impacts in the process. Uh, some I will I'll talk about uh, fissure trough scaling, and I will talk about also fissure trough fissure trough what what is that? It? And the um, results of a model that we've made a chemical model, and uh, and finally a uh, business model that we are proposing for for the plant. So why liquid fuels? Uh, well, there's organic matter in the sludge, and uh, there could be um, energy that can be harnessed. And uh, liquid fuels uh, present uh, some advantages. That they are high value, uh, they're easy to transport, they're easy to store, and uh, there's a high demand in, in Mexico, for example. Uh, uh, diesel and gasoline are used everywhere, and uh, I'm sure here it also is used like this. In rural areas, diesel is used in every machine. So if we can turn somehow the fecal sludge, the organic matter in, in there, into a valuable fuel, then you can give value to the fecal sludge. And how can it be done? Well, uh, there are many pathways, and we, um, we chose this one, where fecal sludge enters a gasifier, the gasifier uh, turns this fecal sludge into syngas, which is a mixture of um, carbon monoxide and hydrogen and other uh, impurities. And then there's a stage of syngas cleaning so that we can put it inside a fissure trough reactor that is basically a polymerization reactor where, where a CO and uh, hydrogen react in order to produce long chain hydrocarbons. Uh, but uh, for people that are familiar with the gasification, you'll know that uh, water presents uh, some uh, limitations on, on the energy viability of the process. So we, we should um, dry some of this um, sludge so that we can reach the excess energy zone. Here I have a, a basic uh, uh, graph 
where we have a sludge high heating value of a dry sludge. And there's the, the, the water evaporation heat in the red, the red line. So where there, they cross, here, here we have the water, water sludge uh, content in uh, percent weight. So uh, for a particular um, composition of sludge, uh, we have that uh, after with 6% of water and beyond that, the, there's not enough energy in order to process this, uh, this sludge. But after 6% into lower uh, values of uh, water in content, then we have excess energy that we can use as uh, heat, like burning the, the dried fecal sludge uh, to make electricity or to store it as uh, dried sludge or to make uh, liquid fuels. But there must be an excess energy so that we can store it somehow. Uh, the energy for drying can be available from either uh, the process heat, if we have a plant, processing plant, and we have uh, uh, energy flows everywhere in the plant. Some energy flows can be recirculated in order to uh, uh, help drying this uh, sludge. We can also mix this sludge with our other combustible wastes, like uh, household waste. So our um, uh, first idea was this one. Uh, as there's a lot of water in the sludge, we could use uh, the other types of waste, like household waste, in order to uh, compensate this large quantity of water and uh, increase the, the, um, the energy of the chemical energy inside the waste mixture. So uh, another advantage of doing this, uh, like, like this, using household waste as a source of energy, is that we are dealing with two problems. That is the fecal sludge, uh, get, getting rid of the fecal sludge, and getting rid also of the household waste. That it's not always uh, an easy thing. Um, well, now I'll, I'll talk about some uh, uh, fissure trough process processing. Uh, Fischer-Tropsch is, um, is a process that was invented uh, many years ago and in, in the World War II, I believe. It, 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 um, it was used to produce fuels from, uh, from carbon, from uh, coal. So they gasified coal and they, and they uh, produced uh, liquid fuels. And the technology is uh, quite well uh, known and there are some uh, large plants here in South Africa and uh, that transform uh, in this this uh, is more uh, like a gas to liquid processing plants that produce liquid fuels. Uh, but uh, the problem of this uh, process is that, um, according to some uh, researchers, the fissure trucks is only viable economically for productions of thirty thousand barrels per day. Uh, so in order to, and you can see the size of the, of the reactor is enormous, but in order to put it inside a system that can, um, a small scale system that could work for a small community or a small city, there, there must be uh, some process intensification that is uh, getting it uh, smaller and more efficient. So here I have a, a nice picture from Velocis, and it's a company that is working on fissure trough uh, intensification. It's a very nice reactor. And uh, he is, um, this reactor can produce 25 barrels per day. And, uh, and it's uh, rather small. So some like a meter square. <coughs> so there are uh, a, lot, a lot of possibilities in, in this sense. Uh, this is one example, and it's a commercial example. But there, there are also uh, other researchers that, been, that have been working with um, other kind of, of reactors, like, uh, well, this is the macro-channel reactor from the Velocis, and it's a picture, there's a, here. And, uh, but also, uh, there are some work being done on the, based on, the, on the, one of the first um, designs for fissure trucks that are packed bed reactors of uh, hundreds of tubes, there's um, um, another approach of using smaller tubes 
and uh, they call it a nuclear tubular reactor where it's uh, small tubes with packed catalyst inside. And uh, there's another interesting option is a uh, ceramic monolith reactor, which is um, a monolith with uh, uh, parallel channels and with the catalyzers inside these channels uh, in, the, in the walls. And uh, simulations for these kind of reactors have shown that they, they could be very competitive within, with each other. So we have some options for this uh, process intensification of fissure trucks. Uh, another note is that um, for large scale production, it's around 50% conversion of the, of the gas that enters the fissure trucks while at smaller scales and intensified scales, it could reach 60 to 70 percent. Uh, that could give, give us some uh, advantage. Uh, but after, but fissure trucks uh, has the advantage and disadvantage that there, there's a whole um, range of hydrocarbons that can be obtained from it. It can be lighter hydrocarbons like uh, methane. Uh, and it can be waxes that are very heavy with 50 carbons or more. Uh, so we have to separate it into useful um, uh, flows. So for our process, we thought, uh, and another issue for with the, with the fission trucks is that um, for um, in order to obtain a valuable uh, uh, products, Sometimes it, it must be processed further after the, the separation. So we try to to minimize this uh, excess uh, or additional uh, processing in order to simplify it and and, and um, making it more viable for small scale applications. So in principle, the idea is that the um, the unconverted gas, the seen gas that passes through the, the fission structure reactor and does not convert into hydrocarbons along with uh, some impurities like the water that it's not here but the, the, the I don't know where is the it's, I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, like water and um, for in the case of the of the gases uh, nitrogen and CO2 uh, so these gases can, we can return them to the to the plant as, as a fuel this fuel can be used in the gasifier, for example, for external heating of the gasifier, or with a or with a torch uh, that uses these gases in order to in introduce some uh, uh, chemical energy along with some oxygen in order to put some heat inside the gasifier. Uh, the the fraction one one of the fractions that uh, is very useful is the gasoline that is uh, C4 to C10. This is number of carbons of the of the molecules, and uh, we um, we would love to see this um, some uh, some uh, experimental data in order to to know if uh, if it would be enough to to just transform this uh, thin gas into fuels and uh, and then mix with the regular gasoline and see what how how does it uh, turns out if it's a good gasoline or not if not. Then maybe an isomerization reactor that is basically a reactor that can uh, increase the uh, obtain number of the uh, gasoline. Uh, it, it could be needed, uh, but uh, there are some experimental experiments to be done in there. Uh, there's a lot of water that is uh, produced in the fischer tropsch uh, reactor, that and this water will have some alcohols and uh, organic acids and it should be treated in, all, in order to, to make it uh, uh, usable water. No? We can use it also in the process. There are some uh, places in the process that, can, that uses water, but, uh, but it's uh, so much water that there is some water that must be purified. And uh, then we have diesel that is 11 carbons to 20 carbons, uh, more or less. And it could be either blended directly and see if, if it's a good option, or it can be hydro treated in order to increase its set number, its uh, its quality. And um, finally, there would be the wax that that's uh, more than 21 uh, carbons, and it can go to 50, and maybe uh, depending on the reactor. Uh, 
hundreds. Uh, this this works. We some some people hydro treat it. It crack it. It, it cracks with catalytic uh, reactors. But the, our intention would be more more to recirculate it into the gasifier, and this way uh, give a, give these carbons another chance to become a useful fuel. And also, it, it can help to um, to the water content of the fecal sludge to compensate a little bit this uh, lack of energy of the system. This wax is is returning. It's um, there could be an advantage in this. <laughs> So how much fuel can we obtain? Well, we made a um, chemical um, model uh, considering the Fisher trucks and uh, basically um, the gasifier, a gasifier model. And uh, we found that uh, about we can, depending on the water content and the mixture of um, municipal solid waste and uh, and fecal sludge, we can find uh, around 11 to 31 liters of gasoline and diesel per ton of waste of this mixture. Uh, the preliminary energy efficiency is around 4 to 14 percent, uh, but this uh, we are quite um, confident that this yield can be improved by drying uh, the sludge below the 20 percent water content that we consider, because we consider the mechanical uh, the, uh, the watering machine and and um, they, um, the, the um, what's it called? The, the, the people that sell sell, sell this uh, equipment, they told us that it would be possible to have a 22 percent, and uh, and we um, we stayed there. But we know there's 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 other techniques that use thermal energy in order to reach uh, drier sludges. And uh, there's a, in the model we all know, only consider drying the sludge because um, municipal solid waste or household waste could be a little bit more difficult to to dry unless we shred it, shred the, 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 the completely and then put it in some kind of dryer. But that it, this could be done and drying the household waste so that um, it could uh, increase the energy in, to be input into the gasifier. So uh, the business model, we, we're targeting a capital cost of, of each uh, processing plant, of a, a mob mobile processing plant of uh, 750,000 uh, no, 750, US dollars per plant. And uh, the target time to invest in return is three to six, to six years. Uh, for reaching this, we uh, have um, calculated that we would need to process at the efficiencies that we talked about earlier, around 80 tons, tons per day of mixed municipal solid waste and fecal sludge, with a central mo mobile processing plant and a satellite supplying vehicles that are um, that are making voyages to different uh, houses and bringing the, s the sludge or municipal solid waste into the process. And, um, well, I think that's it. Uh, so I, I just only want to thank your, your presence here and uh, thank also the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for this, for making this possible. Thank you.